I started at 7 o'clock on uh, November the 11th, 2019. Um, this is the Jamaica Select Board. The first order of business is to call for any late additions to the agenda. Do I hear anybody? I have two. Um, two things that have happened in the last 24 hours that I wasn't prepared for. So we're going to add them to in kind of a one has got time constraint to it. And that one I'm going to cover in an in a, um, executive session at the end of the session. So we'll cover that. It's, it's, uh, we got a request from Muzzy Fund. So we'll discuss that at the end. Um, the next item is to, oh, the other is a letter from uh, the Planning Commission. I just got here. So the, uh, let's approve the minutes of the October 28th Select Board is our first item on the agenda. Do I have any corrections, questions, deletions, comments? I have one. Yes, sir. I have one also. I believe um, under where Brian spoke, um, Brian Zero from the Planning Commission. Do you know what page it's on? Um, the second page, it's item oh, number eight, yeah. where it says, does not feel um, that the Planning Commission was involved with the water study. I think it probably needs to say something was not involved with the water study and leading up to the town meeting or, or something of that nature. I mean, it wasn't just the water study that he was speaking of. I think water study presentation? I think that's what he was trying to say. Yeah. Just the presentation. Presentation or the town meeting. Or yeah. Yeah. Right. And the preparation as well. The What's preparation that? and presentation. Well, he was involved with the preparation. He was upset that they weren't no, involved. No, that was a point they had made, too. What's that? That they weren't involved with involved the preparation. With the preparation. But they were. But I they said he, they weren't. He says they were not? No, that's his letter. So you want to say they were not? He yeah. felt that they were not they involved were not. adequately or something. I don't know if I want to put the word in there, but with the, with the town meeting. It's not necessarily just the water study. I think he was very displeased about their involvement with the actual meeting. Or the right. So he's talking about just the presentation meeting. of the meeting. Yes, not the study itself, which they've been involved with from the beginning, but the meeting itself. Right. I mean, the study was something that was done in the you know eight. Months. Say again. The study itself was done eight months ago. Sure. So. So he was speaking of the town meeting. Okay, so should we say involved with the water study town meeting? I think that yeah, is he tried presentation. He, didn't he <laughs> said that he asked to present at the meeting. Yeah. And we said we'd get back. I don't remember what we said for yeah. what happened was with we'll just see how it goes. Karen. And that was part of I don't know what else, what else I don't recollect anything. I think he was talking so more. Cameron had nominated him. Said, "Hey, Brian's in the back. Can, right. can he speak?" No, I, was, I don't think he was speaking of the during the meeting. I think he was talking about leading up <coughs> to the meeting. That's correct. I get that too. That it was more about they weren't included. They didn't feel that they were included in when they weren't given a spot to speak at the meeting. Basically. Okay. The, the, at the meeting, you're saying you believe he meant? No, I'm, I'm agreeing with what Tom said. I don't think. We're, these are the minutes of. That's what I just said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But somebody here just said something about at the meeting. They wanted to speak at the meeting. They wanted to be part of. Hey, can we talk to you about how this is all going to go? And they were given that opportunity. That's what he was. That's what he was trying to say. Prior to the meeting. Prior to the meeting. So like get together and say, hey, can we have? Can the planning commission have some time to speak in the meeting? And you say, yeah, sure, no problem. We'll give you 15 minutes or whatever. They felt that was an address and that they weren't they given an opportunity. How do you want to phrase this? I don't know. We should have taped that meeting. Well, it was taped at our select board meeting. Was we're, we're not talking about the meeting. No, I mean the, the actual right meeting. meeting. Yeah, the town meeting. I don't know. But um, he's not talking about, Brian wasn't talking about the actual meeting either. He was talking about leading up to the meeting. He felt the planning commission was not involved adequately in, with the presentation of the meeting. With the materials that were presented, right? They were not giving them. They were not given a voice during the meeting. Am I the only one who's hearing two different things here? You're saying during the meeting. You're saying before the meeting. I'm saying no, both. We're saying it's both. They weren't given an opportunity to be part of the planning of what was presented. To me. It's both. So, how do you want to fix this? That's what I just said. 
think that they were not given the opportunity to work with the select board in the planning of the meeting. And thus, they felt they did not have an opportunity to present their views within the meeting. So give us something concise that she can That's, present. I think that is concise enough to agree. Well. I think basically we're not part of the planning because we wanted to speak in the meeting. We weren't given an opportunity to be part of the process where we were able to speak then because we were kind of left out. That's what you said. Okay. Good. Good. Yet, we're not given the opportunity opportunity to be a part of the water study town meeting. Is that correct? The we're not given an opportunity to be part of the planning mm -hmm. of, oh, planning of and therefore did not have an opportunity to present at the meeting at the end of the day, yeah, and thus did not have the opportunity to present at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Just one real quick one on 7B, where it's just above that. Um, Greg, if you could address this, it says Greg and Joel went to Barry for a meeting with Wayne Simmons and Kristen Higgins. They now have a better understanding of the process. A, who are Simmons and Higgins? What's their agency? With V Trans. With V Trans. The agency of transportation. Yep. Okay, with, with V Trans? Right. Yep, that's good. And the, the better understanding of the process. They so, have a better, or we have a better? We, we. So we now have a better understanding of the process. Well, I, I, actually, it could be all of us, them and us. I guess I'm differentiating between you guys and those guys. Right, right. Yeah, not, not us. Not us. Right. I, I guess I'm asking, they? Yeah. It, I um, mean, the technical rule is they refers back to the preceding noun, which is these two peoples, and it's just stupid, and it's probably picky. You right, it's just, sure, we, English we. A better understanding of the, and it should probably say process surrounding just, bridge number eight or uh, thirty-eight. I just want to make thirty-two. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Why can't you just say that Joel and uh, Greg and Joel now have a That's better fine. understanding? That, does Perfect. everybody accept that? Yes. That's sure. Good. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll make, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. You're opposed. I have three to one. Motion carries. Did you want to make a comment first? No, the discussion's over. No, that's true. I, did, I, I think if we wanted to correct what what he said, that whole thing he wrote should have went in the minutes. We're just going off the cuff on what he said by memory. Uh, I had a right? recollection on some of that. I had a number of conversations with him as well. That's why yes. I, well, that's I, the only thing that's already. It probably wouldn't hurt to put the. I don't know if we can. The whole thing is on computer, right. on tape now. Yes. Yeah. So any question anybody wants to go back and take a look at it, dial up last. Uh, select board, they can see the entire thing. Yep. All right, next item. Um, did we, did we all vote? Yeah, we did. Who the timesheets and the select board orders? We'll do that at the end of the session, as is our standard thing. Mm -hmm. We got a letter on our five. We have a letter from the Vermont Attorney General regarding class action lawsuit regarding an opiate epidemic. Regarding the opiate epidemic. Um, Greg, you sent me. I had gotten that from an article. VLCT. Yeah. The, and, the letter. You got the letter, but there was something. Didn't you send me an article? Well, I did send the, the group as just information yeah. su surrounding this. Um, that was a VT Digger at, um, article. Do you want to, want to kind of paraphrase that for us? I mean, we've got it, but just for the camera. Um, well, VT Digger, which is an online news organization, had done an article on this class action suit 
um, that um, originally, I guess, um, I'm forgetting his first name, Sessions, that our <coughs> Attorney General had. Donovan. Donald. Oh, you mean for the country or for Vermont Attorney General? Oh, Vermont Attorney General, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just TJ Donovan. Um, and his suggestion that originally he had opposed to the state or the towns um, being involved in a class action suit. And I'm probably not going to paraphrase this exactly correctly, but he's now um, changed his mind because of some restructuring of the class action suit. Um, he was concerned about the towns competing, I, I guess, on the state with the states. Um, to be able, to, if there was ever an, an outcome of this uh, um, of this class action, so let me back up just a little bit. What what Donovan is asking? Yeah, read the letter from this. Is, this is I'm the whole letter, two pages. But uh, he's saying, I'm writing this to address recent questions arising from a notice inviting Vermont cities and towns to join in a negotiation class involving opioid-related litigations. In other words, a class action suit is being proposed that involve lots, I mean, thousands of towns across the country to deal with the opioid crisis. The suit is supposed to be suing the, um, makers. the makers and the sellers of opioid medications, uh, drugs. And the idea is that these small towns and cities across the nation are going to be involved. So what he is asking is, if we as a town wish to be a party to this class action lawsuit, we need do nothing. If on the other hand, we would like to get out of it, we need to send a letter to um, Montpelier saying we're not interested in being in this. Now something that I read and I believe it was in the letter, it was in part of the article was the total allocations. Did anyone right. get to that level and in Wyndham County? And we're looking at you read that. Looking at four hundred twenty-four dollars for our right. town. Not that that this is not four hundred twenty-four dollars we don't have, but we're not looking to make a ton of money to address this crisis. If you're even like towns like Brattleboro, I think we're making forty thousand, and, and uh, Wilmington was making eighteen thousand. But we're being such a small town, a small population, we're not looking at all right. That money. And I think the whole premise behind this is that some of the larger towns, and I know St. Albans and Bennington have already are already parties themselves, where they've had much bigger ramifications of this issue and they feel that they can be have a better access to this by being parties themselves as opposed to parties with all these individuals and um, and, and they, they have the resources to put behind it. I mean sure. I think a lot of small towns the reason that this was proposed is a lot of small towns one the payouts aren't going to be all that great most yeah. likely and secondly the, the amount of resources to put behind a lawsuit like this doesn't make sense for a small town. But, but does anyone think, besides me, that this is like government overreach? You know, just adding us in, we have to opt out of a, of a national sort of federal lawsuit against three plaintiffs that I actually have nothing against any of these guys. I don't want to. I don't want to get into a whole. Uh, I really have to be careful what I say about this because I've been directly affected. People in town have. There's other things too. I mean, are we going to join in on a lawsuit against Joel if Don T.J. Donovan thinks we should, or you know, there's no press on the effects of alcohol and alcoholism anymore because this is getting all the press and may potentially get him reelected. I mean, I I'm, I'm not, I do not appreciate them asking us or telling us they're just going to add us in, especially after Tom told me the dollar or not. I mean, more money would make it more interesting, but I don't think it's any money. My business as a select board, but, but I don't. I know there's people in town that'd be pissed to hear me say that or upset. But I don't understand how, how he can have such a reach to just opt opt us all in unless we ask to be let out. It, it does seem like this. It does seem odd. Why do we? What? That's you know the root of the problem is up for debate. Did everyone, whoever was prescribed the pill, did they go and get OD'd on heroin? The, I mean, there's other responsibilities too. And I, I think we're being pushed into joining in on something that is one thing maybe uh, up to a larger branch of the government or law enforcement, but they're not gonna get any of these monies to stop the flow of 
it's just a huge can of worms, if you ask me. One of the things, if I remember reading this one in other places, that they're asking the individual agencies, towns, who might choose to not be part of the lawsuit, they address as perhaps having their own lawsuit. Right. And that if you don't, if you don't join them, you can get out of this class action and then have your own lawsuit. Right. And I think that's what they're saying is that if you, if you're a small town like Jamaica who don't doesn't have deep pockets and four hundred twenty-four dollars or whatever isn't going to cover our legal fees, you can jump on board with this big class action suit and then the state covers those costs and you'll get a little bit of money back. Whereas if I'm a, a Brattleboro, let's say, they say, well, you know what, we have some deeper pockets and I'm just throwing that out. I, guess, I understand that. that. they can have their own suit and maybe they can get millions of dollars versus the 40000 they get through this. So they say, you know, we're going to take a look at that and potentially pursue that. Again, that's all hypothetical. Um, and so the state is saying, you can join us, you know, no, no. You're, you're in on this if you want to be, if you don't want to be on this and want to do your own thing, then go. But as a state, we're, we're all doing this, I guess, is what they're saying. Yeah, and I actually, right or wrong, but. Mm -hmm. I, uh, my opinion is that I think it's a good idea. Uh, in numbers, we have strength. And I think for, and it is affecting all of us, even though it may not affect individuals within our community, it is affecting all of us, and I think we need to be a part of that. So I would vote for that. I think from personally, the chair position, personal position, I, I echo um, Andy's point about I don't like Montpelier telling us we're going to do it unless you tell us not to do it. That just doesn't seem like the way to go about doing that. To me, that's a personal thing. I think you're right on that. The other piece of his personal interest. Well, I'm not afraid to say that. No, well, whatever the cause is, I don't like Montpelier telling us what to do. It should be the other way around. We should say, right. so, you're invited to join us. You want to join us? Fine. The other piece of this, and this is, I'll move over here now to get out of my chair. Somebody, sooner or later, is going to do the numbers, and they're going to say, not everybody who took these opi opioids became addicted. What is the factor that's missing? And when somebody with any brains in the legal community starts looking at, wait a minute, you have people who are addicted, true, we have the opiates, but there's a vast group of people who took these medications who did not become addicted. Ergo, there's another factor. And until they start looking at that other factor carefully, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. It's just going to be all kind of this stuff. And they have looked into it, and it's the a personality, and you as a exactly. psychologist know that, that it's a personality factor that gets people into drugs. And whether they are able to control it or not, that's where that factor really has its strength. Exactly. So I think, I still feel strongly that I think we need to be a part of it. Yes, maybe the state has not gone about it in the most effective way. But to opt out just simply because they haven't done it the right way, I think, is wrong. That still, the numbers are important. So what we have on the table is that you've all seen this. So the question is whether or not we, as a town, would like to vote to extricate ourselves from this, I don't want to call it an unfunded mandate, because that sounds a little pejorative, but it, because it's not costing us anything. So funny is not an issue, but to join them in their pursuit of whatever. Do we as a town want to exercise our right to get out of it or leave it the way it is? So I need a motion, picking one of those sides, and then go forward. I move that we join this uh, statewide uh, group of towns uh, to make statements concerning the opioid crisis within our whole United States and especially in the state of Vermont. Could we narrow the motion down to just <laughs> Vermont or just Jamaica? Okay. She can do that. <laughs> well, that's for a motion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's her motion. That's her motion. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any further discussion? Just want to reiterate that I feel we're making uh, these these companies. Believe me, I uh, I'm up on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I pay attention. I understand a lot. They, we stuck that can of worms I was talking about. I started to hear it open. You know more when you saying, You know, maybe not everybody. What about 
of the crack cocaine epidemic, what, uh, how many people are drinking, how many people get killed from smoking. You know, I, I just think that I feel as though we're involved in the prosecution of uh, these entities, these three people, three uh, Purdue, the owners, and these distributors. We're involved. Nobody's ever been prosecuted or proven guilty of this. It's just they're settling before that's happened. I, I don't think that me as a select board member should be responsible for making uh, decisions like that. Like, like making, it's like a, a legal opinion at least. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't think I have the uh, authority or it's in my duties as select board member to be, uh, you know, to, to judge this, what, this uh, thing that's going on and, and to really have to get involved in all of the aspects of it. It's huge. It's all, the, it's the only, that's the only thing that's getting pressed in that realm of uh, our, our problems in society. People it's that one thing, that one, one <laughs> <laughs> drug. That's why I, I got a problem with that. I understand what's going on. I mean, I believe me, I understand. That's all I have to say. I, I don't go along with what the town wants. I don't. I don't usually make comments on these things, but I do have a feeling in this one, and that is very parallel to yours. I'm not. I, I'm not interested in. Um, the political promotion that I think is taking place on a one good idea. I don't know that that's going to go very far. It doesn't matter. I don't like, as a town, being told by Montpelier, we're going to do this unless you tell us not to, as opposed to inviting us to go. So from that perspective, as a town, I would like him to ask us to join it, not tell us we're going to do it without your permission unless you say to do it. That would be my position. Well, he did. I, it was worded nicely. He said, "Oh, he did nice words." Yeah. Yeah. He's a lawyer. Like we don't care. To say yeah. if, if he didn't ask to have that put on, we would just been having that. Hmm? If Greg didn't well, I mean, ask, it, right? We saw. We didn't letter, talk about it. I mean, yeah. I read the letter. I got a copy. So I got. They sent me the letter. Yeah, I got a copy from his office. We got a few mistakes on that. And then I got the correct. So then got fixed. I got the correct. But it's also them looking at these potential big dollar signs that are not going to trickle down to amount to much anyways and to the point of even where do you draw all these connections um there i'm sure there's a, there's the the stage that they're they want to be on just to be seen did, did you see the line in there where they said the attorneys uh, for this position are going to get 25 percent of the uh, well that was actually bennington's bennington's suit that's what they have i mean i don't know what the attorneys have at this one i mean there's something they're, they're, they're all going to get something right any further, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, uh, your motion was to go along Correct. by doing nothing, technically. No, uh, all in favor of um, uh, aligning ourselves with this um, lawsuit, say aye. Aye. I have two ayes. All in favor, all against, say no. No. And I am the uh, deciding vote, I say no. I will be glad to draft the letter. I will submit it to everybody to make sure it makes everybody happy. Put the letter saying thank you for your offer. We we, we uh, reject the opportunity to participate in this lawsuit. Why didn't? What was the four against? Three and two. Three against. Three against two. Were you against? Mm -hmm. Oh, two against. Three three against. Three. Split the difference. So basically, what I will have to do is I'll put a letter together for us, submit it to the. Well, I'll send, make sure everybody sees it first, and then we'll just say thank you. We respectfully decline to participate. In this I mean, if, if their projected billion dollar payout comes true, it would boil down to what you said. It would, it's 400 bucks. 400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. okay, thank you very much. And now we'll all watch this just like we watched the lottery when we forget to buy the ticket. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next item is the um, update on the town hall repairs and um, new findings. Um, I'm here to talk about what is happening in the town hall in terms of the bathroom. And it's winter time, and again, we're running into these problems. The bathroom water system has been a problem for a number of years. 
freezing pipes have prevented greater usage of the town hall. We have tried to insulate the pipe, keeping the bathroom heat on, and yet the problem still exists. The pipe runs from the front of the town hall. When I say front, I mean actually as you're facing it. That's, Street side. Yeah. Street side. Uh, uh, and uh, of the left side of the building, where it comes out of the ground. Remember, the uh, well is up top on the hillside, and it is underground, the pipe. When it reaches the town hall building, then it runs underneath the building itself. And of course, there's no basement as such that's there. So it's really out in the cold. Um, the heat tape has been used with concerns of possible fire, uh, so we are we always hesitated to use heat tape. Insulation has been used, and I have found out that the insulation that was recently put in has in fact been all messed up, and it's not really doing its work. The heat has been kept on in the bathroom, while the heat in the building has been lowered. That has not done its job either, but it still freezes. The church has been kind enough to let us use their facilities, but this really can't go on on a regular basis, that every year we have to ask the church to come, uh, help us when we have a program there to uh, <coughs> open up their doors so that we have some kind of bathroom facilities. The major problem is that the space for events is useless during the winter time, the winter months. It is important to have the town hall accessible year round. With the interest expressed by many to make the town of Jamaica more accessible to concerts, theater, parties for community members, children's programs, meetings, produce sales, art shows, etc. It is important to fix the town hall water system so that we do not have, so that we do have access to the building. This will have a direct effect on bringing in new stores and activities and ultimately build the town's economy. And that has been our focus for a year, as you well know, to help uh, increase the economy and our town to grow. Therefore, uh, I have been in touch with Stuart Barker to see what he thinks about doing it, because he is the most recent person to be crawling around down there. And he said, and I was talking to him on the phone, he was going to go look at it today for me, but he couldn't. But he remembers and actually reported it to the two women in the office how bad the area is down there, that he believes that we really need to be doing some work down there. And, and he gave me an estimate of about $1,500 that he thinks that he can do that um, and go down there and fix it so that we will have water and begin to use that building all year round. So what I uh, would like to propose is that we go ahead and have that fixed. I think with the bid um, of $1,500, I don't have to go through uh, the RFPs uh, and finally get that fixed so that the building will be open. And, so many people are using it, especially Tom, you're involved, and we have to close down winter we've seasons. Yes, we've had problems with winter. Yes, and, um, and I think that it's well worth our while to, um, to get it fixed. Did he say? Fixed, right. Did he see how he's going to fix it? Uh, he's going to be looking at it, and he feels that it, insulation. Uh, with how he considers insulation, I can get further details about that, but that he feels that he can uh, insulate it. So um, I move, uh, and we can have discussion after.
afterwards. I move that we go ahead and have the um, bathroom water um, supply. Yes, yeah, supply <laughs> in order to uh, keep the pipes from freezing, so that we that whole bathroom area and ultimately the town hall can be used uh, through the winter months. I have a motion to have a second. Right. Any further discussion? Do you recall, Judy, how much out of that last year's capital fund, so to speak? That's all been used up, right, with the painting and the still work? I mean, there's no money left out of that anymore. No. There, okay. But I think this year we budgeted five. There's million. always something in there. We put five in, I think. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. so we got money would be covered. I think it's well worth it anyways. I mean, to, I mean, that's a maintenance cost that we'd probably spend 500 every year just fixing it. Yeah. And especially, I think, with your group. We're going to be doing a couple of events in December. Yeah. Too, I don't and I would love to see things there. happening in January and, you know, hopefully we're we going to see. come. I absolutely agree with the idea of fixing it, getting it done right <coughs> with the distance. It's uh, like reasonable. Yes. Right. Yeah. I well, mean, and I trust store. He's yeah, done. I do too. Right. And I'm telling you that what he's been doing has been, you know, thorough and uh, very reasonable. Yeah. I work around him sometimes other places and some um, of the stuff he has. The only, expensive. the only question I have, and I can say this because all right. he, is, <laughs> he is really good at what he does and we've used him and we always like his work. Does he have any idea when he can get to it? Uh, I suspect it's going to be in the winter time because his um, his outside work really becomes. So as that wanes, yeah. he can then turn to the inside. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I just I mean it's in an unheated space, and you're going to insulate something, and it's just going to be cold on both sides. I mean, insulation keeps the cold, the heat in, but if there's really no heat in there to keep in. I, it's just a small little logic thing. Like I said, I have no idea how he's going to do it, um, but it just kind of says, that, you know, is he really just insulating? It's going to be insulating the cold. This, the um, thought I had when we were talking about this before is if, if the pipe, if the floor is here and the pipes are here, mm -hmm. there's no insulation at all. If the insulation is down here, whatever heat is in the building, we keep the building around 50, don't we? 50, 55? I think even less. I think it might. The bathroom. I think the bathroom. Yeah, the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
hopefully that's done within the next month. Excellent, excellent. Um, and then from there, one of the things that we've been working on as, our, as the mill committee group was uh, building a, a, a writing a memorandum of understanding between our group and um, and the town. So for our use of the building and also for um, leading what we're going to be doing with the building, the rehabilitation and things like that. So I've sent out that draft. Um, it's a two-page document that um, was modeled off of something that the, um, the Vermont Preservation Trust, I believe, um, had done. Um, they had worked with a very similar structure in the town of Fairley, so the, just a little bit of history background. So this is something that's been used in other towns. We modified it slightly for us. Um, basically, it says what our group will do and what the town will do um, to kind of guide us through this. I don't know if anybody has any specific questions regarding that. Um, some of the key takeaways are um, that the town will continue to own the building. Um, whether or not we lease it is still to be determined. That's not really covered in here, but um, that we will be fundraising and working and doing our, um, you know, all funding, whatever, for the rehabilitation of the building and for the programming and things like that, the operation of the building will come through this um, independent group as opposed to through the town. So that's kind of what this is all saying. Basically, it gives us the ability to go in there and, and do things. So you're saying that the town, that the group, your 501c3 group, right. will be doing repairs we will be the ones that will go out and um, seek grants, get estimates for work to be done, and, and we would always present these. I mean, that's part of that in there too. Anything as we're moving forward, this would all be presented to the to town and say, yes, do it, don't do it. So it's still, the select board still has ultimate sign-off on it, um, but the actual work being done and the monies being used would be independent. Oh, sorry. The town would still own the building. town would still own the building, right. And I think that's kind of what we took away originally. The town would still maintain, I mean, it would still be on the town's insurance coverage um, through VLCT. I mean, that economically makes sense. I mean, it's a very minimal cost uh, what, of what it would be if we did that independently. Um, and the town would, would benefit from the ability to be using the building to go down the road. Similar, I would imagine, um, you know, the usage down the road would have a similar structure as what the town hall that now has. Maybe yep. we, would, we would see programming in there and get people to pay for you to use the building and that kind of stuff. Do we need to uh, have a motion to accept the MOU as presented? Yes, we do. I would say. Yeah, I'll so. make a motion to present the MOU as presented. Do a second? I'll second. 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 Um, any further discussion? All in favor of accepting the MOU as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes, along with our thanks for the work you've done putting this together, sir. Your next yeah. item. Thank you. Um, the next item, now that we have this, um, we have proposed a volunteer day. I've done a little bit of work, um, again, with different people at the LCT and the insurance coverage. Um, and also met with, um, I have his name here, Wade, um, who's the lost preservation, or pres preservation, um, he, he works for VLCT as far, as far as their liability side of things. So he and I met at the building and went through it, um, you know, just on that outside in the lower level that we had access to, to look at some of the risks that were there. Um, our the insurance coverage for the town does cover uh, people working on specific tasks um, as volunteers, and that could be anything from reading a book at the library to, you know, shoveling the, the, the sidewalk out front or things like that. So we, um, there is a draft, uh, VLCT again has a, um, a, a draft, I guess, a, or a template to be used as a volunteer form. Um, so if there's a specific task with a set time limit, limit and supervision, um, that all fits within our liability insurance coverage for employees. 
um, for the town employees slash volunteers. So we are proposing a group of four people to go into the building and basically remove low hanging fruit, so to speak. Um, there's some old mattresses, there's a lot of cardboard boxes, things like that that are um, fairly a hazard to the building, I guess, as far as fire goes, and also um, just a, this top level cleanup um, and get that done this fall. So we wanted to kind of throw that out there too. I've got it. I think I what would that. Need the most to the um, well, something I think we want. I feel better as being a representative on the mill on the group that we've got the endorsement of the select board to um, just start the process to have because I think it's a little bit new. Um, I mean, I was learning from it as far as what's covered, what what volunteers or um, you know how volunteers are covered under under the town's policy as far as. Um, and, you know, liability insurance and stuff like that. So, I mean, they are covered, too. So. I think that's the like a motion or just say, yeah, we support it. Question. Yep. Are you considering uh, making the building a preservation uh, building like the town hall? It's still a little bit of work in progress. Um, we do want to, uh, the, the group, the, the, this, this, the mill committee has, um, decided that they want to preserve it as, as, a, as a historic building. Whether or not it fits the guidelines of being, you know, that, that structured as far as what the town hall is, um, which limits some of the opportunities for grants, but it also opens up some opportunities for grants. And I mean, we've got, um, as you probably know from working at this building, it's got some ups and downs. Yeah, it does um, have its ups and downs. Yeah. Because the fact is, is that the town, even though we own the building, what the preservation committee tells us is the word. Right, right. And we've been so, working with Jenna. She's been pretty involved just to let us know. I mean, she works for the preservation trust. Jenna is who? Jenna Lipinski. She works for the preservation, Vermont Preservation. Mm -hmm. um, so you really need to so go we into know, yeah. that idea with some trepidation. Yeah, thing. yeah. So our, our idea, a rough timeline right now, is for the next six months that we would get the roof on, we'd get some base level cleanup. We'd let the road crew know that anything that's in there that needs to be road crew-ish out of there, and there's not much of that left anymore. Um, and that throughout the winter, we would be formalizing our bylaws, um, getting our tax ID number and that kind of stuff to, to form the nonprofit officially. And then we would come forward with a, a proposal plan that we present to say, what does that then the next year or two or three look like as far as um, I mean, we've got a mission and a vision statement. Um, I, you know, I, I'd happily read those, actually. Um, they're just one-liners. Let's see if I can find them real quick. Uh, but I think that gives everybody um, the board here, but also the, um, it, it gives the board an idea, but also gives the town an idea of what we're looking to do. So um, a mission, basically, a mission statement is what we, where, what we, what you are, and then the vision is where you want to go. So to create, our mission statement is to create an economic, cultural, educational, multi-purpose facility that is recognized, vibrant, engaged, and engaging destination and, and landmark for markets, events, arts, workshops, exhibits, and history in the Jamaica community. So we want to be a community builder um, as far as in having small scale type events, exhibits, things like that. Um, our vision is to preserve the last physical manifestation of the 19th century millworks, which represents the heyday of Jamaica's water powered products. So basically, we want to maintain that historic building um, and building around, building the infrastructure around that so we can sustain that. Yeah, very good. Okay. So it all came out of just trying to get the routine. Do, do we do a motion for this? <laughs> I think we should because what we're doing is we're, we're, um, Ensuring that our liability within the within the insurance uh, yeah. parameters is covered by this for the volunteers who gave who may or may not get injured. Yeah, and it's all in place. I mean, we're not we didn't rewrite the town insurance policy right. or anything. I mean, it's, it's all, all covered. Everybody's covered. It's just more of from a knowledge base. Sure. Um, if we okay. we don't probably need a. Um, I, but I'd like to but because we, it like could to, potentially why, why be involved if somebody gets hurt. Let's just make sure we're covered. Does this before the next motion? Is this just about liability insurance or everything you talked about, including cleaning out the place? And well, that's part of that volunteer. Yeah, but just volunteers have a question about sure. if there's a lot of 
mattresses and that kind of thing. There is literally mattresses. Billable. <laughs> are, are you got are there funds to pay for to get rid of that at the transfer station? Or? As of now, but there's not. But our contention would be that it's town stuff that's okay. in there. No, it's just curious. Yes. No, I can't imagine. I've never been in there, so I can't imagine. Okay. Yeah. I know it's a little yeah. pricey. All right. I would make a motion to support the Mill Commission's volunteer agreement. Um, I'll select the Okay. No, second. No, second. No, uh, second. Uh, for the discussion, one thing. In this, and I read it over and I forgot to bring it up before we got to the motioning part, uh, we keep talking in terms of the township versus a town. I'm sure this was cut and pasted. Sure. And if you look, the last one, for example, I'll perform the volunteer service and plan to say itself, uh, or approval by the township and a lot of the direction of township officials. I'll do a little quick talking to people after I get this, and I guess there's a difference between a town and a township. So perhaps. So that's on, okay, so yep, I see. Yeah. So let's, I, I, I would then make much to accept it with that change. Excellent. All in favor accepting that change? Yeah. Take it off the show. Yeah, right. Okay, accept the change. Therefore, do we have we have a motion on the floor? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Again, thank you for the work you're putting in this building. Thank you. There's a lot of, lot of groundwork. So thank you. Thanks, so. um, next order of business is number eight. We need to set the dates for the annual budget preparation meeting. Um, in the past, we've done it like on Tuesday evenings. Somebody has suggested to me that if we did like one Sunday, and just devoted the day to it, we may be able to kill it off in one setting. Okay. Does that sound to you all? Sure. Because that's easier for you to get rather than getting in the evenings. We have to, uh, is that something that, that makes sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. When did we start? Well, it's the middle of, uh, middle of November, so we ought to be on it here fairly soon. No, no, time. Time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't care. Well, nice. what's your high off in the morning on Sunday mornings? Uh, I'm busy till 11 o'clock. So we start at 1? Sure. Mm -hmm. It'll go to 1 to 5. Say again? 1 to. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm just saying 1 to 5, that's all. So we put a pretty good dent in it, but it's going to take longer than that. It'd probably take a little bit more, but that should give us. The theory is it takes us a while to get started every time we take a break. So if we just run right straight through for five hours, we may actually get a lot more done than we would ordinarily get in two or three separate little groups. And Terry? Will yes, I talked to Terry. She's willing to do this. Quite honestly, it was her suggestion. Oh. I think that makes sense. I agree that it takes us a little bit of time to get up to cruise enough that we just kind of get together. So, or a Saturday or something. December 8th, why don't we shoot for that day? What day? December 8th. December um, the 8th? I'm not here. <laughs> um, so December 15th. I'm here. Can we hit it? Is, there, is November already eaten up? Yeah. Uh, not really. Not really, I guess. 10. Today's 17th. the 10th. I love it. We get the 17th and the 24th. Be the 24th. The week, yeah, Sunday before Thanksgiving. Yeah, well. 24th work for everybody? Anybody have any conflicts with the 24th? Let's do it with the 24th. Start, let's do it on the 24th. And then we'll see what we get done and, and proceed from there. And then actually do it on the 8th or 15th or 15th. We have, that's what I said, we didn't have time on okay. the 7th. And 1 o'clock was the time? Yes. 24. Okay. Sunday, 11, 24, 18 at 1 o'clock. Or an honor of Veterans Day at, 11, at 1300. Okay. <laughs> the next um, item of business we have is a letter from Planning Commission. We got a letter today, and she's saying, uh, this is from Rebecca, oh, the uh, chair of the Planning Commission. Dear Select Board members, this is to let you know that there will be a public hearing on December the 16th on the new energy element and other modifications in order to make the whole work consistent to the town plan. And that in addition, the hearing will be concerning the readoption of the plan itself. As some of you may know, we have not been able to locate evidence, registered mail receipts, parenthesis, that indicate that the plan adopted in November of 2017 was properly delivered to neighboring towns. The town plan is only as useful as it could survive a court challenge, and we, need, and we would need that evidence to prove that it was adopted properly. 
Um, please let me know if you have any questions or need more information. And I think Sarah has posted this. Did you post that someplace? I gave her a copy. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. So she, you all got copies. I posted it. Yep. Posted it. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay. So that's information. We can operate from that position. Thank you, Rebecca. <coughs> Next item of business has to do with. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Laundry public concerns, and I've got an executive session that we're going to go into on the Muzzy Fund that just arrived today, and then we will close out after that. So, I'm going to do public, uh, time for public concerns. We have some public concerns? Yes, we do. Hearing none? Yeah, I do. You do? Yes, sir. Um, just for the board's information, on November 1st, we did the Mega Fire Department was coming out for Triad Mars upon Route 30 and Wallace Road intersection. A uh, major line, a major pine tree broke off, ranch took about several lines down and stuff. It tied our personnel up from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, we, as a fire department, are basically for life, safety, and fire, and not traffic controllers. We did do traffic control. Uh, we actually had to reroute traffic up Preston Road and over Mount Acres uh, by 2 a.m., uh, 2 p.m. We requested that there was 12 tractor trailer trucks staged up in Rossonville at the gas station and they wanted to come down through. So we opened the road and we let traffic one way come down through. We had to. Uh, we, plus we had one truck sitting in our yard and a couple other trucks turned around and went other alternate routes and stuff. Our concern is we, we would like to see, um, well again, this should have been a V-Trans situation. They were tied up in up in Londonderry, South Londonderry area, because there was no way in or out of Londonderry, so there was issues up there. So to have the manpower for VTrans was impossible. Our concern is uh, our town crew, road crews and stuff. We had a second and a third call that same day. Uh, I had no manpower to go out and investigate. I did. I went to Pice Falls Road up around 3521, which is where Sean Gully's house is. Um, there was a large tree that came down, took wires down, wires were dangling and stuff. Um, we had no personnel to go up there and do anything. Um, I did mention it to Paul, since he's the emergency manager director, that you know, there was some lines down and stuff, and our concern was getting the road closed. Well, um, he, he, I guess he instructed one of the road crew personnel to go out and look at it. I guess they took the bucket loader. I shortly followed up, up up there and all I could find was a, an area just wide enough between the guardrails and the trees that were down that people were passing around that and going underneath wires and stuff. Um, again, our concern is that the power was out. There was a power company here in the village. I let him know about it. He went up the road and shut the power off, at least that part. Problem was closing off Pike Falls Road to traffic. People were going under the lines and around the cones and everything. We, in the afternoon, late afternoon, went up and put cones out and, and, and taken stuff. But we feel that's not our job. That's really the road foreman's job. So where they were uh, in regard to emergency situations, I have no idea. I was told they were up cotton trees, but how important those trees as compared to what Pikes Falls, which is your main thoroughway to Stratton, because everybody knows that, you know, that, that traffic is used heavily there. And of course, what we had to deal with up here on uh, Mountain Anchors and stuff. So uh, we did the best we could, but we're only a volunteer group. And there were several guys that were there that took the time off from their jobs to, to do that. So we're just kind of asking that you guys, if you would make sure that your road crew is more diligent of responding to emergencies like this, of checking with the fire department to see if there's anything that they can do or stuff. Also, road closing time. As Paul Lee led to me at one point, we had them for Irene. They were made up and stuff, but we don't know if they went into that barn that uh, you guys have. Right, if they are over there, just let the town know. That there are there. signs in there. I know that. I have not done You don't know what kind of road call no. signs? There's some upstairs, too. Could very well be road closure. What's that, sir? There's some upstairs, too. Oh, there is some road closure signs? I believe so. I don't or barricades. There's, there's signs. Okay. No, that's something that they, you know, they should be aware of and stuff. So. Well, thank you for your yeah. crew, well, you and your crew's yeah. work on this. It sounded like a rough day. Yeah, it was it? It was a long day. It was a long day. 60 mile an hour winds, did you? Yeah. 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 It would have been difficult to respond. 
to other emergencies because we are tasked with traffic control. Um, somebody's house could be burned down. And yeah. We can deal with that. On house. I mean, I mean uh, we kind of like, we're like, if you want us to be a road crew too, <laughs> pay us. Uh, we were considering putting into our next year's budget a disaster management fund to pay for signs and to pay for our time in doing other departments' work. Um, we didn't do that. Um, we're also taxpayers. But there was some thought into it, you know. I mean, we don't have cones and road closure signs, trained personnel to do stuff. I mean, the lines down, you know, we don't expect. Only Green Mountain Power deals with those. Um, but as far as, you know, the chainsaw work and stuff, you know, we, you know, clearing out stuff that is involved in lines, you know, it's not our job. Were you doing that kind of thing with chainsaws yes. and all that? Yes. Oh. Um, we put the wet stuff on the hot stuff. We did the band-aids on the medical stuff. We don't do road work. Mm -hmm. That's not our job. We're not free labor either. I mean, we're taking, we don't get compensation for the stuff, this extra stuff we do. We do it out of the, because we're Jamaican residents and we live here and we feel for our neighbors. Um, but we're overwhelmed when these things happen. Um, we're sending guys out in dangerous situations. We, when I was chief, we preferred to go as two people work in the buddy system, safety and numbers. That day, we were sending guys and gals out single, all by themselves, some without radios, some with radios. It's difficult. Paul knows where <laughs> he's in the same boat. Um, I mean, we also tie up another fire department as well. We had Wind Hall covering up from 30 to 100 to stop traffic up there. You know, that, that was committed for a whole day for them. Um, same, you know, they got the same feeling as we do and stuff. So, so we're kind of just like opening up to the discussion for the board to see, you know, what you would like us to do or how to proceed. And Can we find a solution to make this work better? I would suggest that um, that the road foreman and the chief and assistant chief and the EMD all get together, sit down, come up with a protocol. This was a bad situation. I mean, literally, London Dairy was totally isolated. Because trees are dropping faster than they can clear them. So it was an unusual situation, but you're exactly right. And you've got a handful of firefighters that are tied up, um, as some of us were, driving traffic for eight hours. Um, if there's something emergent, then we're, we're in trouble. And you're exactly right. Perhaps we could have employed those guys in that. And if, if Keith had known our situation, instead of being up cutting trees wherever they were, because they were busy, there may be a way to tighten up that coordination. I think that the four of us sit down. Um, come up with yeah. a plan for that. Did one another our contract with the sheriff's department? We, they were they were available as near as we could tell from the radios that we were listening to. Everybody right. out there in a uniform was tied up doing something. Right. It wasn't just us. It was, no, it was, it was all there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did see one there. deputy. He was up on Pike Road when I was making his second trip up that way. He was coming down through and stuff, but whether he was on duty or he was just checking on the roads or stuff, but he didn't really say. I just had to spot him. But the, these regional events tax the system yeah, yeah. with a growing, with a less number of volunteers. Nobody works in town. I can't leave my job to come out for this stuff on, only on a rare occasion, and I can only do that sort of, or I won't have a job. So you don't have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't put food in the so it doesn't pay the bills. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put in the minutes that the chief, assistant chiefs, the EMD, and, and um, the road foreman will get together and tighten up our the policies. This wasn't sufficient enough to generate the uh, emergency command post, but nonetheless, the communication could have been jacked up significantly. Yeah. On that topic, we have a radio issue, and this is something for all of you to understand. This has been discussed as well. We, our fire, our fire trucks cannot talk to our road crew trucks. Oh yeah, because of the... Because of the, their different frequency right. bands, spectrum bands. So it was oh. a, whichever one's which, I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 
we in any case. We talked about that last meeting, weren't we? Well, we've been talking about it for no, years. The, uh, yeah, right. yeah, we've been talking about it for years. The reason they have the new radios that they have was because we could afford that. We could not afford to jump to a completely new system. That would then make it possible for them to monitor these. So what I've done is I've patched together a couple of handhelds that we could use in an emergency. So I've got a handheld in one hand and a so, fire radio on the other. So we have some work making it work, but it's not the ideal system. We might want to think in terms of, at some point, reconstructing the radios, although it's awfully expensive. We'll have to wait and see. But that's, some, that's part of the communication. So we can't call them from a scene. Mm -hmm. Having said that, we live in the mountains. No matter how good, unless we got satellite phones, there are going to be times when we just can't communicate. So it's better to have some kind of plan to enforce. We need you in one spot. Yes, with both radios. Um, through emergency management and stuff, the incident yeah. commander needs to be in one central location stationary. Yep. Can't be moving all the way around. So everything comes yep. in. So Paul being on, actually being on a traffic control. <laughs> Me driving all around. Yep. He, in the, this disaster thing, he's in charge, you work for, we work for him in an aspect. When we have something that's specifically fire and we need more resources, he works for us and we pull him in. But in this disaster stuff, he needs to be located and we actually work for him. And, and the road crew answers. Yeah. And he needs we'll be to happy. be, the, he need, you need to be Yep. The go between the two entities. Since our radios, we can't talk back to each other, keeping you out of the loop. You need to be the go between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the good news is I just upgraded the, the charger on the radio that I have, so we have some hope of actually communicating with. But at any rate, be aware that's being worked. Let's get together. We'll find a time afterwards we can talk. So, hey, we can do that. I got one more thing. Okay. Can you look into the fire department's assessment payment? Yeah, can you find out when we're going to get our assessment for this year? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the... Uh, oh, Terry. <laughs> yeah, Terry's the one that got the answer. Terry's got the answer to that? Yes. Okay. Because uh, the treasurer of the department asked me oh. to pass it along, and we haven't seen the money to make it run. <laughs> Let's talk. Yes. <laughs> so, Tomorrow. I mean, I, I'm hoping everybody paid their taxes. Most people did. <laughs> Because we just made a major expenditure. So. For what? Oh, 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 oh. Go ahead, Tom. I shouldn't ask. Um, we're down on the fire truck. Oh. Um, it's being in for repairs and the bill's going up. So, um, age, it? age, mm -hmm. age is beating us up. It's not wear and tear, it's age. So, um, it's been down for two weeks. We're working on a third week now. So we have all mutual aid, automatic standby in case we need We're still functional. I mean, yeah. having the two trucks helps. Um, it's just it's hard to get everybody into one cab. All three of us. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting here. Should be back, what, the end of the week? Or just need skinnier arms. Skin or skin or skin or more, just on the subject, you know, it's obvious that the fire department is running with just a few volunteers. And I, I know we ask and put the word out that the Jamaica Fire Department could use some new members, younger members, you know, just mimicking what I've heard from you guys. And I, I, under, I, almost, I, you know, I understand how important it can be. You know, you think, you don't really know until you know, you need their services. My truck caught on fire a few nights ago at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and there were seven or nine guys there a quarter after 2 in the morning on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, whatever the hell it was. And, uh, you know, that's about the whole fire part. That's good. It was quick action. That was good. I'm just saying that. Yeah. You know, they get up in the middle of the night, and every time I hear the alarm go off, I'm not on the fire department. I understand it's a huge commitment now. It was when I was a kid in New Fane, but things were different then. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a, I'm 
speaking for these guys, it's obvious it's a challenge for all the smaller municipalities and I think there's a lot more. These volunteers might have to be paid sometime, somehow, or, or, or to entice people to get in. I mean, all the training they have to do is just crazy, even to think about joining. Just as a sort of a commercial, <clears throat> if in fact someone's interested in joining, we have come up with different kinds of schemes to cover the cost of their training. Okay. So that's something we can we can do if somebody's interested in joining anytime. Whether it's fire or EMS, either one. Exactly. Um, as we're speaking and as you're talking, it dawns on me, we should think about maybe uh, not so much an auxiliary as in the classic auxiliary, but I bet there are people in town who we could train, we could send them to the VTRANS um, flagging school and, and have a group that can be used just for flagging to free up the firemen. They used to have it, it's called CERT. Well, that was statewide and that died off too. But that's what that program was. Exactly. CERT, CERT stood for civilian, yeah. at any rate. Emergency response teams. Yeah, and that was across the state. And so these were non-fire folk who were available to do these kinds of tasks, specifically traffic control. They used them all over the place for Irene, but because volunteerism is waning, they've closed. And they've got different combinations in different locations. We could do our own. We don't need to wait for the state. That's something we can talk about when we get together. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the kind words, by the way, for the department. So at least I could do. Wow, that's one other thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have volunteer. The fire department would set volunteer uh, cash or financial <laughs> contributions. I'd like to know. Okay, if there is no, nothing else. Like <laughs> no, I, I move to, to find premature general knowledge of a Muzzy issue fund. with the Muzzy Fund, which will replace said applicant at a substantial disadvantage because the select board would potentially give away information if it discusses this in public. The second that. Uh, I move that we enter executive session to discuss said Muzzy Fund issue under provision of Title One, Section 313A1A of the Vermont Statute. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And I oppose, no, we stand adjourned at 8, 12, 13. And um, we'll be addressing that to the individual putting the request tomorrow. But we have approved it. Do I have a motion? To, to, to adjourn. To adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have two seconds. Do I have any other further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And we're adjourned at 25 after.